as I every, people. Every bone in the body of the man creates a marrow, according to what is needed to be used. We see this, I explained this in part of the teaching somewhere. We see the ribs, the ribs produce a specific bone marrow, which is needed by lung, primarily. And they produce, but if it goes in at the raw state, if you break a rib bone, and the rib bone which creates the bone marrow for the lung, and it penetrates the lung, and um, is not converted to what is supposed to be to reach for the immune's continuous use of the immune system fields of the lung, it's a poison to the lung and it can kill you. What is there to help the operation of it, if it uh, interacts with the lung, the same bone marrow creates an infection with a combination of the calcium of it that it can kill you. Many people, in a car accidents which they, or in accidents which the rib breaks and penetrates the lung, they, the, the lung is totally not freed and the bone stays in touch or within the structure of the lung, people die within six to 12 months from that infection. What is there to create life? it becomes a poison, because it hasn't been transferred to the plasma conditions in a, in a, a strength which hasn't received conversion. At the end of our bones, all these, what we call, chewable parts, are part of the extraction of the fields for our heart and for our lung, to create a condition, magnetic field of, that the lung can operate and disinfect itself continuously. This is the purpose of the cage we have, that we put a lung in there, a continuous disinfectant area. In the industrial system, we don't need that, we are more free of it. Because the acids created there in a physical matter of the of what we consume, does that. But if you look at it, it's the same. It's the same with our skull. Our skull continuously creates a field plasma of a bone marrow, of itself. Because of its shape, we don't see the bone marrow, but it creates that field. That that field protects the brain from receiving infections. We have the same thing in our hip. If you cut the hip bone, you still see marrows is for keeping the reproduction organs totally continuously disinfected. Or in operation of the field strength. Some of the bones are totally continuously in immune production system, there is nothing else, they just continuously create immune field system, energies, that they create a plasmatic disinfection. This is what I told you, you do the same thing with um, the viruses. We are not teaching something which is not, this is exactly how things operate in the body of the man. We create a clean environment, we put micrograph systems and different systems that creates that condition of the cage. Your bone marrow does not need to come out of it to be used to go to a cell. It creates it and in its environment creates a field which keeps the lung disinfectant, and keeps the operation of it. Some of it, at its ends, are fed in, and become part of, and everything else. If you look at your ribs, the shape of them, where are they connected? How are they connected? What do they produce? What do they feed? Why are they connected to your uh, spine? Look at the shape of the, the the shape of every vertebral disc. Not connected, but produces a massive magnetic field to contain it. If you look at your spinal 
um, cord and your spine, you actually got the tokamak. Is a reversal tokamak. It holds the magnetic field, the energy field of. If you look at your spinal cord, and if you look at your discs in it, this here is a massive plasma transformation, both ways. Your bone is your discs are massive containment tokamak to keep this field inside, it doesn't leak outside and it goes through where it's supposed to go. And then when you see the what is converted to what we call discs here, it's the same thing but without the calcium, but allowing field flow that the nerves can break through. The difference between the magnetic gravitational field of these two allows the cavity for the nerve systems to come. It's not just coincidental. It's taken billions of years to generate the fields to the right way that it creates a cavity for the nerve system to flow between the discs. The information doesn't get lost. You live in a body of the man in a plasmatic condition. <laughs> And even this, these discs create their own bone marrow to create the fields that can contain the information going down and up through the channels. Otherwise all these leaks, when the information comes from the brain or from the organ, is gone somewhere. If you look at it, you have a one circulation of CERN as you want to call it, but in a straight column. You have to be able, these vertebrates, the uh, bone marrow, or the, in fact, neuro system, is a communication line system. And you have to hold it, it's a high speed um, cable. And for it not to lose any, but it has created, okay, we need a vertebra, vertebra to be standing up to have a shape, but body has used as a containment field flow. And then, if you change slightly the position of the one or the other, you have problem with the disc and the nerves and the rest of it. The physicality of the man is very simple, if you look at it from the magnetic, gravitational point, but all of it, not just where you choose. Up. Every bone in the body of the man, doesn't matter if it's the wrist, or is it the leg, or the toes, all create a magnetic field. If you even look at the shape of the bones in your foot, everything has a specific positioning, to make sure, more or less, the work of it is to keep one neural system in, that it keeps the physicality in balance. If you look in the, 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 if you look at the foot of the man, I'm not a very good drawer, whatever fingers you have, and the toes, there is one neural system which goes through it. And the whole operation of all your bones in your body, more or less, is to keep this nerve in line. That's all it is there for, part of it because you walk on it. But this nerve touches your life, changes. If this nerve moves a micro-millimeter, a micro-millimeter, you have all the pains and all the operations you go through. The structure of the foot, when you look at it, the shape of it, your bone and everything else, is all, 99% of it is, to keep this nerve in a straight line. Because this nerve controls your upright position. In your body, you have two control of the uh, positioning. One is on the bottom of your foot, and two in your ear, inner ear. This balances this for the head, which is for the soul not to move too much, and this one controls the physical upright position. If you move this slightly, 
you find all pains and problems. And many of you have been with me, I do this quite frequently. If you're walking, your ladies with your summer shoes and you move this, the slider gets caught by the table, this moves from here to here, then you have all the back pains and then the shoulder pains and everything, because this nerve has moved. The operation of all these bones you carry is to create a magnetic field that this line stays in its position. And how this line stays in position, the shape and the size of it, decides the characteristics of your height, your physical feature, your physical dimension. This nerve at the bottom of the foot, this, because if you cannot support it, you cannot have it. The size of the breast, the size of your buttocks, all decided by this the strength of this nerve. Because it's a balancer. You put the weight in the front, I put the weight in the back, I create a balance. This nerve adjusts. And then, all the little, tiny little bones, which you have in your foot, is to correct all the motions of this leg, because all these, in fact, are connected to your verticality. This is to control there, because it's for the liver and the breast. This is for the buttocks and that. If something happens, you fall on the ground, something happens, this moves aside to keep you upright. The physical structure of the man, and the diversion and conversion of the fields in the bone marrow state, for every bone, is partially to create that fields that lead to controlling neurosystems and information transfer and upright position. Many of you, many of you women, especially uh, with your high heels, if you look when you're walking with the high heels and you change the position in your foot, you twist your ankle. Why? Because you have moved in the shoe and the position of it than being like this. It does what happened to correct itself, it has to twist one point, and that's why you bend your knees. No, sorry, bend, twist your ankles, because this nerve is moved. This nerve has to find a position. Why don't we see people walking straight, going through this? If somebody walks and goes through a straight and twists the, uh, the ankle, maybe because of the change of surface, because this cannot control, but if this is removed, if it's this position with your toe moving, you just find you get the twist in your ankle, you get the pain in your ankle, then sciatic nerve and everything else goes up. Everything has to adjust, because this tiny little nerve is the control of all your physical structure. The other part of it, in the inner ear, is more or less, is for your brain and your soul. This protects itself, this protects itself. This is the soul, and this is for physicality. and people who lose their foot, this nerve goes to diversion in the pinpoint accuracy to the end of the nerve which is connected. Then it becomes very hard, that's why with amputation we cannot walk. If in the future the scientists can develop the system that this nerve at the end of the amputation becomes flat like this, you can still hop with one leg as normal, because that will create a balance. Everything is understanding the principle of it, not just what we've been told to accept. The shape of the dome of your foot, your toes, all is more or less to protect that. And as I was explaining to knowledge secret recently, when you, when you,